Last week, I talked about opportunities for women and why it's sometimes harder for women to dream big and achieve the same goals as men. And this week, I'd like to deviate from my practice of talking about the career goals and actually discuss an issue that affects women, but also men, and that is relevant here on this campus and many other college campuses in America. And it's pretty bad, and it's something we can actually all help prevent, and it's called sexual assault. First, uh, let's talk a little bit about statistics. Uh, how serious is this problem? and uh, the problem of sexual assault and rape. Well, every year in the US, 1,270,000 women are raped. That makes us the country with the sixth highest rape rate in the world. Nine out of 10 <laughs> rape survivors are women, and uh, compared to the general population, uh, rape survivors are three times more likely to suffer from depression, six, th six times more likely to suffer from uh, post-traumatic stress disorder, 13 times more likely to abuse alcohol, 26 times more likely to abuse drugs, and four times more likely to contemplate suicide. Two out of three rapes are committed by someone known to the survivor. Four in 10 occur in the home of the survivor. Two in 10 at the home of a friend, neighbor, or relative. And only one in 12 in a dark street or parking garage, unlike what some of us may think. 72 to 81 percent of college women who are raped are intoxicated and becoming voluntarily intoxicated increases the statistical rate, risk for women to be raped more than any other action. One in three rapists are also intoxicated. And uh, well, women in sororities are 74 percent more likely to be raped than non-Greek women. Men in fraternities are three times more likely to rape than men not involved in Greek life. 64% of rapists have consumed alcohol or drugs immediately before they rape. Out of every 100 rapes, only 40 are reported to the police, but only five out of 100 among college students, in part because university officials all over America discourage survivors uh, from uh, pressing charges. Of these, only 10 lead to an arrest, eight get prosecuted, four lead to felony, felony conv convictions, and only three spend a single day in prison. So 97% of rapists walk free, and that's again in the general population. College students who rape have less than 1% chance of, uh, of ever going to prison or being charged. So most college students rapists go on to have wonderful careers, while the lives of those they've raped are forever destroyed. Rape is therefore the least prosecuted and convicted violent crime and the most common violent crime on college campuses. And that includes, in fact, Ball State. Uh, according to the last crime statistics published by the university itself and covering 2013, uh, there were 27 reported acts of what the report calls forcible sex offenses. Um, and this means rape, rape or attempted rape. I'm not really sure what non-forcible means in this context. But bearing in mind that on average only 5% of cases on college campuses are reported. This number of 27 reported cases actually represents about four, 540 incidents of rape or attempted rape, and that's 6% of the female student population here among undergraduates, and that's just last year. So this leads me to the most alarming statistic of all. One in four female college students will experience rape or attempted rape by the time they graduate from college. How much is one in four? Well, let's see. If you're one of the women who volunteered for today's presentation, can you please stand up? All right, thank you. Everyone else, please look around. Um, this is what one in four women would look like if we apply this statistic in our class. So look around you. See how many of your classmates one in four women would actually be. These are not mere statistics, you can sit down, thanks. Uh, it can actually happen to people you know. Here on campus, around you, very likely it has already happened to women you know. And we really have to ask why rape and sexual assault is so rampant in our society? Why aren't more rapists going to prison? Well, the main reason is that we live in what is called rape culture. Uh, rape culture is, is defined as a reality in which rape is normalized, rape is excused tolerated, even condoned due to various societal norms and practices about 
sex, and sexuality. Rape culture is the objectification of women, the tolerance and dismissal of sexist and offensive language that men often use toward women in public places, the assumption that women need to take all sorts of precautions so they don't get raped, like, uh, or, or, or this blaming the victim, she was asking for it, she drank too much, she dressed like a slut, and so on, failing to prosecute rapists and also allowing college student rapists to graduate with distinction. And the denial that rape is as widespread a phenomenon as it really is. You want examples? Well, there you go. Rape culture starts with advertisements. <coughs> huh. And uh, commercials. Example number one. Here's another. And here is another. And here is another. And uh, one more. Yes. It continues with politicians, some of whom really appear to hate women so much that uh, they would even claim that if a rape already happens, women should actually accept it, even enjoy it. Uh, here are some quotations. Later on, you can actually see them on the website. Uh, pretty amazing stuff. Uh, rape culture is, of course, also out there on the web, in uh, social media. Uh, you really don't even have to look hard enough. It's just very easily uh, there. Uh, it is also rampant among the people who are supposed to protect us, the police. Another reason why so many survivors are not really very happy or uh, you know, excited about pressing charges. Uh, some examples uh, of women who went to the police and what the police told them. You dated a man 20 years older than you. Don't be surprised it happened to you. This is why we have underage drinking laws. This is your fault. If you hadn't been drinking, this would not have happened to you. Uh, the nurses who did my rape kit said, well, uh, there's more than enough evidence that I've been raped, yet the police who took on my case didn't believe me. Uh, well, we asked him and he didn't rape you, so there's nothing we can do. You can't have a drink with someone and expect this not to happen. And, of course, uh, university police uh, are often not much better. Uh, rape would stop happening if uh, it was just, uh, women would just stop spreading their legs and so on. Okay. Uh, and of course, we have fabulous police officers like this guy who told, well, if you don't want to get raped on the highway, just follow the law so a police officer doesn't have to stop you. Uh, it's just wonderful. Unfortunately, rape culture is also promoted by women themselves. Uh, this is the thing that's very hard for me to understand, and I have to say I'm not very proud to be a Princeton alum when I uh, read this. Uh, yeah, so this woman actually claims that uh, uh, if you get raped on a date, it's just one of those college learning experience that, you know, it's just part of your life, right? Uh, it's also, of course, on places like Fox News. We've seen quite a bit of it there. Uh, yes, bad girls who like to be naughty. This is just wonderful. <laughs> Um, but finally, I have to say rape culture is also on our campus, too. Um, these images that are now going to come up on the screen uh, were all taken here on this campus. The subjects are Ball State students, and the images were shared publicly on Ball State Freshens, a very popular Twitter page, followed by over 7,000 people that has been instrumental in promoting rape culture on campus and in harboring criminals who tweet freely about the passed out women they had sex with. Why do I say criminals? Because unless uh, you're not aware of this, uh, in case you're not aware of this, having sex with someone who is too intoxicated to give consent is rape. Uh, and rape is a violent crime. At least some of you will uh, likely think that I'm taking this uh, too far, um, that uh, BSU Fashions uh, is just a site that promotes uh, good times and partying that rape culture, well, doesn't really exist, that all of this is just ridiculous. You know, last semester, the students sitting, uh, this is the website, right? The students sitting in my class uh, in this very presentation took this picture of me as I was talking about this very same issue. Uh, and this picture got a lot more views from Ball State students than the video of this actual presentation. And it was, of course, put up on Ball State Fashions, where other students tweeted about the professor who showed nudes in class. 
Seriously, are you that stupid that you still don't get it? I don't understand. So what do we do? How do we stop this? Well, first, we need to accept some basic assumptions and start educating everyone around us about them. Women don't get raped. Men rape them. Rape happens because someone planned for it to happen, not because she was asking for it. A rape survivor is never, ever responsible for being raped, no matter what she was wearing or how much she had to drink. Only her rapist is. We must understand that a woman who dresses provocatively or seems very or overly friendly or talks about sex is still not asking for it. If she does not say yes, and that means a loud and clear and explicit yes, and cannot say yes or cannot say yes, because she's sleeping or passed out or drugged or intoxicated, it means no, there's no shady area here. Uh, you know, it's not borderline or unclear. Having sex without explicit consent is rape. Having sex with a girl who had too much to drink is rape, even if you are also drunk. When a friend had too much to drink, seriously, take her home or to her room before she finds herself in a dangerous situation. Because chances are, if she had too much to drink, so did the men who are around her. So don't be a bystander. Interfere. Extract your friends from potentially dangerous situations. Men too can and should uh, play a major role here. Speak up against rape <clears throat> among your friends and within your fraternities. When you see a friend who is getting a little too touchy-feely with a woman who seems to be drunk at a party or elsewhere, pull him or her away. If you know of someone who slept with a woman who could not give consent, turning, turn that person into school authorities and the police. That person may be in your fraternity, but honestly, a criminal should no longer be your brother. Uh, if a woman is passed out in a party you're at, find friends and get her out of there. Make sure she reaches her room and bed safely so she doesn't wake up the next day at a stranger's bed or on some random bathroom floor and her picture ending up on VSC Fashions, of course, wondering what had happened last night and who had violated her body. If uh, your female friend is a survivor, offer to go with her to the police or to file a complaint with the university because uh, chances are the police and university officials are less likely to dismiss a woman's claim when another man is present. If you're a survivor, have someone, a friend, or maybe even a professor you trust or some other adult, <coughs> go with you to those hearings or to the police. So, to sum it up, we should not be telling women to be passive. We should not tell them to not dress provocatively. We should not take up less space or tell them not to take up less space. We should not tell them to not be dominant, to watch where and when they walk, to not lead men on, to not walk alone, to not drink too much, to not invite attention, to not sleep with too many people, to be careful who they talk to, to carry pepper spray to take self-defense classes, to never walk home alone, to carry keychains or keys <coughs> between their fingers, to not leave their open drink anywhere, to not go into public bathrooms alone, or to not go out at night alone, but rather just tell men not to rape and call promoters of rape culture, such as BSU Fashions, out on their shameful practices and stop using this website, please. There is a lot we can do here on this campus to help prevent sexual assault and rape. And recently, a new sexual assault prevention and awareness group has actually formed here on this campus. They're called Act Now. You may find them on Facebook. They meet every other Tuesday at 7 p.m. Two of their board members are actually in this class, Christina and Corinne, where are you? Just stand up for a second so people can see. And I'm their faculty advisor, so uh, please feel free to get in touch with any of us uh, or just go to the Facebook page. Uh, if you're interested in being involved in doing something about this uh, so we can put an end uh, to this uh, phenomenon once and for all. That's about it. Thank you very much for listening. Have a wonderful spring break.